Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We'll be in Isaiah chapter 48 verses 10 and 11, as well as chapter 38 verse 12. All right, let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day. Thank you for another word, God. Lord, let it be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, just as your word says, God. Help us to hold fast to your word and help us to remember it in times of trouble, Lord God, and also in the good times. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Of course, we have been here before, Isaiah 48, verse 10 and 11. Let's just go back through it. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. So here the Lord um, is speaking through the prophet Isaiah. And he's talking about, you know, refinement and the fact that we might be put through something, but it's not unto death, right? And it's not unto, you know, to make things worse or drive you away. It's to help you in this situation. And the revelation that the Lord had given me about this scripture is that it is also a, a rapture scripture um, because silver is refined seven times, right, in the fire. It is a very strenuous strenuous process um and it, if you know you put something in the fire a lot of it is going to burn up if you put it in the fire seven times uh, most of it will be become dross right most of it will become burnt away so um and seven times usually is going to represent also the um refinement through tribulation so um the it says i have not ref i ha behold i have refined you yes he's going to put you through some things he is going to cause you to have have to go through things in life right um they are common to man they are they are normal things that people go through in life but it says i have refined you but not as silver i have tried you in the furnace of affliction what is affliction affliction are the trials of man right they are sickness they are disease they are um a angry boss who's never satisfied they are children who are doing their own thing these are the afflictions um um of a righteous man right um and, uh, the afflictions of of a normal person the afflictions of a poor person it, it it's every person goes through afflictions um some extreme and some not so extreme so this is you know something that we should be getting we should be used to right yeah sometimes you go through seasons where nothing is happening but you know what everybody goes through seasons of affliction so he's saying i've refined you right but not as silver i have tried you in the furnace of affliction and remember refinement and trial are to bring the best out of you they are to to make you better right not to make you worse he's not trying to drive you away from him he's trying to bring out the characteristics and the fruit of the spirit the character of god the the things that will last the things that that are of him so verse 11 for my own sake for my own sake i do it for how should my name be profaned my glory i will not give to another so this profaning of a name of his name is most likely having to do with the glory of another right so here we're more than likely talking about idolatry it says for my own sake for my own sake i do it when you see the two times repeating itself um, it's like it's bearing witness, right? You're repeating itself. You are reinforcing what you're saying, almost like truth, truth. This is this is the truth, right? So listen to what I'm about to say, because this is the truth. And so he's saying, for my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. What is he doing? He's refining you through um, affliction. So this is for his own sake. Why for his own sake? Because his name cannot be profane. You can't bring the, the all this junk, all this stuff that needs to be burnt away into his presence, right? A lot, right along with the the other works, right? Right along with the other things. So you have to burn those things away in order to be presented in a perfect God 
God's presence. God is perfection. He is, he is goodness. He is everything, right? He is so, um, pure right and so in his presence you can't bring all that ugliness right when when um when the prophet uh isaiah came into his presence you remember he was a man of unclean lips and so when he came in he was immediately conscious of that he was in me in a pure and perfect god's presence you will become immediately um aware of sin and so god had to burn that away so it says for my own sake for my own sake i do it for i sh how should my name be profaned you can't cannot profane or defile God's name by including it with these other gods by by giving his glory to another right you you can't do those things those are unacceptable so these are the reasons why he has to burn away some of these things through refinement and making you better bringing out the best in you all right so let's move on to the next verse Isaiah 38 verse 12 my dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. Like a weaver, I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day to night, you bring me to an end. So this, of course, is the verse we just had. We had just had this. Um, my dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. Remember, this is King... Um, King, not Ahaz, I keep wanting to say Ahaz, that's his father, um, King uh, Hezekiah, and and this is the the lamentation, well, I don't know if you would call it a lamentation, but it is, you know, what he wrote after he had been healed from his affliction, um, from his sickness, um, so this is a part of that, and he, he looked back um, and tried to remember how he felt in this trial, and so um, this, these are the words that he came up with. He said, my dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. So the shepherd's tent is a temporary dwelling. It's a, it's a place of, um, uh, that is easily picked up and put down. And we know that our life is a vapor in that way, right? Our life is like grass. It just is there today and gone tomorrow. It's, it's, you know, for a short time, right? But he's saying it's even shorter, right? It's, it's being plucked up really quickly for him. He's, and he has no notice of it, right? It's just boom, it's, it's over. It says, he says, my dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd tent like a weaver i have rolled up my life so um like a weaver so a weaver is constantly um adding into the the pattern right and taking away and and making things intricate designs right but but when it's time for the weaver to move on to another um another carpet or another blanket or whatever they're working on they stop what they're doing and they quickly um roll up the pattern right so he's saying his life is being rolled up that way almost as if god is just done and he's gonna drop him and move on to the next thing it says he cuts me off from the loom meaning meaning like he he completes it when it's not done right instead of instead of you know pausing and, and rolling it up and working on something else he's saying that he's being cut off so like it's almost like you just sever all the threads right immediately without giving and without no almost as if you're giving up on that part of the loom right so you're just going to cut it off and, and start something else so it says from day to night you bring me to an end so he it, he feels that he doesn't have any notice it's just so quickly he's in the prime of his life and boom it's over right and, and we know that from from looking back on this part of hezekiah's life you know hindsight is 2020 he ends up being healed right all this 
this these words that he's saying end up coming to not because he actually God hears his prayer um, as he cries out to him. It was a very simple prayer for God to remember him, remember his works, and remember you know him, him his servant, and um, and God remembers and God gives him fifteen more years, right? Um, even though God knew what he would end up doing later against him. So God is an omnipotent God. He is an omniscient God. He sees, he knows, he's everywhere. He sees your future, even when you're going to mess up, right? And thank God for Jesus because we have Jesus now. Back then they didn't have that hope of Jesus. All they had was, you know, the thoughts and knowing what Sheol was and this like, um, um, like not really having a full revelation yet of of all the things after death and you know a, a revelation of the messiah uh, a manifestation of the messiah right so all they had was the teachings that were given to them and thank god for jesus right because we know that we can be found in him we know that even if something was to come along and you know cut us off we have the word we 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 know what God's word is. We know his intentions towards us. We actually have something we can flip open and know that, hey, this is what God says about me, right? And we have the Messiah and we have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. He is such a good and merciful God. And I'm so grateful to, to be a part of his kingdom, Um it's saying here that, you know, he, he really didn't have notice of any of these things, but we know that even if you don't have notice, you have his word. Even if there's a diagnosis that comes upon you that you did not expect, you still have his word. I have been diagnosed with a couple of different things and praise God for his word and his healing power, right? Um, the first time it was like many years ago, um, I was allergic to something, a preservative, and they thought it was blood clots forming and all kinds of stuff. And it was like a horrible diagnosis. And I got in my car and I was like so scared and um, about to cry. And I called a friend and she was just like, girl, you better quit claiming all that stuff. And she just quickly brought me back to reality and had me pray. And none of that stuff was true, right? It ended up being a, a preservative allergy. So, and as long as I stopped eating that stuff and stopped um, messing with that, then I was fine. And then another time, a few years after that, um, I was diagnosed with something. I immediately started crying and um, realized like where my help comes from quickly. I realized this time through, of course, you get it, you get the second time around, you realize, hey, I got help. <laughs> I don't have to, I don't have to be afraid. And I'm not saying that all diagnoses will come to nothing, but but what I am saying is you have help. So yeah, I, I started crying um, after this particular diagnosis. Then I realized, no, uh-uh, I ain't claiming this. And quickly turned around and said, mm -mm, I'll just go get another um, lab report. And the, yeah, because this is not true. And I just kept saying, this is not true. And I started claiming God's word and kept saying, this is not true. And the lab report was like, we have no evidence of this. This is not true. And so praise be to God. <laughs> and, you know, just God, God is there for you. You have help. You have Psalms 91. You have every scripture in the Bible behind you right even if the shepherd's tent is plucked up even if the weaver rolls up your mat even if you're cut off from the loom and from day to night you are brought to an end you still have jesus you still have his word he is with you he is your god he is your king he is your lord hallelujah you might be going through refinement 
argument, but you are not being tried as silver. Praise God. You are not going through the tribulation. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. It is new every day. You can give us the same scripture every day and it's new every day, God. We know you to be a loving God, a great king, a wonderful savior, Lord. Thank you for your word. Forgive us for ever doubting you, God. You are God alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.